Uh, thank you everyone for coming. So today I will <laughs> talk about this topic exponential decrease. Of, uh, of intersection volume with some applications in coding theory. And everything I'm going to talk is joint work with Hong Liu and uh, Ye Hun. And during the talk, if you have any questions, you can ask, for example, how. <laughs> <laughs> so this I And I, I will start with a rather abstract definitions, and then I will slowly illustrate it by concrete example. So we have uh, some, uh, let's say, a finite matrix space. X and D, D is, is a distance of matrix in, on, the, on X. And a subset, so this is a matrix space. Let's say finite. And a subset C of X. And I, I also have some uh, positive number R. So I have a uh, X and D is a matrix, and I is some real number, positive number, and a subset C of X is called uh, X D R cos. Let's say a subset C here. Why not? And it is called as the HDR cos. If, the, if we look at any two elements of C, then the distance between them is strictly bigger than R. So that's the definition. If, more formally, if the distance between any two cos was C1 and C2 in C is bigger than R for every. C1, C2, in, in C. And actually, this abstract definition capture almost all no family of, of cost that I'm aware of. For example, Let's say if we consider this uh, QRI space, Q to the n, and the distance d is a and d is a Hamming distance. Namely, that if I have to to vector in X. So if X is, if I have two vector of link N and Y is Y1, YN in X, then the Hamming distance between X and Y is that the number of co coordinates at which they, they differ. So it's a number of uh, coordinate i, so that's x i is different from y i. So this is the Hamming distance. Then uh, this this is simply called as a QRI code. Then we have the notion this is just QRI code.
and if again if I consider this uh, the same the same ambient space Q to the n or maybe even Maybe just uh, maybe a different space. That's uh, the the slide of a Boolean Q. So so X is a set of C or let's say C zero one to N. And the number of uh, one's coordinates is uh, some fixed number. Right. So this is the slide of the hypercube. And the distance here, D, is a uh, Johnson distance. Johnson distance. Which is half the Hamming distance. Because if they have the same weight, then the Hamming distance is always an even number. And so this is a, a half of the Hamming distance. Or it's half of the symmetry distance, this kind. Then uh, this gives us the, so this definition will give us the notion of a constant weight cut. So constant weight coming from from this line because uh, on the code word line the same line so they all have the same weight and there are many more uh, familiar costs which I will define in detail but I will just mention so if you are interested you can find them in wiki for example so for example we I have the notion of permutation code. So it is code defined in, in the, the set of permutation, and we are, the matrix is the Hamming distance. We view permutation as a, a string of the n. And even though in this talk I will focus on this talk, we focus on finite matrix space, but this definition also makes perfect sense if X is not finite. And one example, maybe the most famous example in this case is uh, called the spherical code. So spherical code is that you fix an angle theta and the spherical cost of a parameter theta is just a collection of unique vectors in the n-dimensional space, such that the angle between any two vectors is at least theta, at least the fixed parameter. And it can be also interpreted in, in this language. So the question, just one of the central questions, or maybe the central question in coding theory is, what is the maximum size of, of a code, the HDR code? What is the maximum? In a, a in a matrix space, so this is a question we will try to address in, in this talk. So is the question clear? So we have a finite matrix space, and we want to study what is the maximum size of a code of an HDR code over the matrix space HD. 
and you should keep in mind the the two examples. I hope I'm probably not. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm, I'm not. So I... oh, maybe this one is. Can you see it from here? If I write here, can you see? So these are the questions and. And so this is a. Definition of the code, like how can we bound the, the size of the, of the maximum HDR code? So let's say, let's see it's a, a maximum HDR code, HDR code of maximum size. And let's say H is finite, even though everything I, I talk makes sense for, for infinite. As well, but let's focus on finite k. So let's see is a maximum HDR cost. So what does this mean? This means that so let's say C consists of a C1, C2, so on, C k. Right? They lie somewhere in, in in this space, and the distance between any and the CI and CZ is uh, bigger than R. So if around a code goes CI, let's say I put a ball of radius R, I do this for every, every CI. So they might overlap, they might disjoin, I don't know. So let's do it for every element of C. So, so, so we put the bonds of radius R or C I for every I, or for let's say for every C in in the cos C, and uh, I claim that this uh, this system of uh, bonds covers the whole space. That the simple observation is that the union of on the, this ball covers the whole space. I, why is this the okay? case? Because suppose that there is a, an element of the space line which does not belong to any of these ball. Let's say it's I, because of because uh, it does not belong to the ball, right? which means that the distance between H and CI is bigger than R for every CI. So there is a contradiction because now we can ask H to, to, to C and get a, a bigger cost. So what do we get from these observations? So if we take the cardinality of both sides, right, then what we get is that the cardinality of S equals the, or that's the union, that's most the cardinality of the sum of cardinality of Z ball. So these are also obvious, like the union bar. So this we, we have C, so this is almost C times the maximum of all of these ball, the volume of Z ball. It's a maximum of C in C of the cardinality of Z ball. But if we replace C by, by H, then we are also 
an STA2, right? Because the mass in room will get bigger. So the cardinality of S is almost this one. So from this, what we get is that the cardinality of C is at least Let's say I times one over the, this maximum. And if we consider, let's say, the spherical cost, then instead of uh, using the cardinality, you should choose a suitable measure, let's say, measure in the unit sphere, then we get a similar bar. So this is. Uh, yeah. yeah, for H2 for maximum cost. So this this bar is really simple. Right? The proof is few lines, and that surprisingly, this bar is kind of the, it is quite difficult. It very is notoriously difficult to improve over this simple lower bar. And the, the upper bar, but the, the, the gap between upper bar and lower bar are really huge. For example, a simple upper bar we can, can get is that because if C is a cost, then, the, if, then uh, all the bonds at radius R over 2 over on the cost goes are disjoint, right? Then again, using the union bar, we get an upper bar on the side of the maximum cost. But in in all the cases, we we have in all the example we have here, the, the upper bar and lower bar are very far apart. So it is not clear whether the lower bar or the upper bar should be closer to the truth. So improving either lower bar or upper bar are very interesting questions. So again, in this talk, I focus more on the lower bound. And the main question is, how can we improve over this simple lower bound? I think for a very long time, or more than 50 years, is the uh, more or less the best we we have for all no family of course. So to to improve over this now, let me. So one observations maybe I should mention that. In all the example, I have this uh, the, the space, the matrix space are kind of homogeneous. On the bond of the same radius have the same cardinality. So the, the space we consider are kind of symmetries. So to, to give you an idea how can we improve this bound, let me interpret this in terms of the graph language. So we can define graph of G with the vertex set is the is X. So this X and D. And I put an S between X and Y. If the distance between them is uh, uh, 
of mod r. So S phi is an S of G if only if the distance is as most R. Then S D R cos is nothing but the independent set in, in G. Because here SDR cost means the distance between any cost goes is strictly bigger than R. Meaning that there is any, we don't have an edge between any two cost goes. Independent. That's the G. Then the size of the maximum code is that the, the independent number of the graph. And we can bound the independent number using the two-run bar as a two-run bar. Actually, this, this look a bit, little bit like my name. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so we can bound this by by the Turan theorem. We can bound this by the number of vertices of the graph divided by the average degree. Or let's say if the as I said before in on the example, we have the Z quantity are the same, right? So let's make that an assumption. Let's say also I zoom this. On this number are the same for every C in in I. We choose for all of these example. So on the bond of the same radius have the same cardinality. Then if we make this assumption, then so the degree of this graph, so Z, then Z is, uh, so the degree is just the number, of, is, uh, so S in S, then what is the degree of S? Is that the cardinality of uh, be S R minus one because we don't count the the center S. <coughs> and so the two run bound for regular graph says so that the independent number is at least the number of vertices divided by the the degree plus one. <coughs> So where is the volume? Uh, so this bar is a, actually is the same. Is the same as this bar. So how can we improve this bar? There's, so we know that to improve we can improve the two run bar using the, some local Spanish of the graph. For example, we know that if if G is, is triangle free, then by a theorem by uh, some year we know that the independent number is at least let's, let's why is this quite divided by the Let's say Z is, is D regular. Then we can bow it by 
So this is a two round bar. And we can get a factor of log D improvement. Maybe one half or one quarter here. So So we can improve over the two round bar if we know some more information about it, right? So more generally, instead of a triangle free, if we know that, if we look at every vertex of the graph, and we see very few edges in the neighborhoods of the vertex, that is called locally spa. And if the graph is locally spa, then we also have a similar improvement. I'll also choose this inequality if Z is locally spa. Is that clear? Locally spa mean, for example, if we look at every vertex, this graph Z, and if we look at every vertex X in the graph, and we look at the neighborhoods of ice. Then the number of uh, exists within this neighborhood. Is let's say so the maximum post possible is this the square, right? And if we get anything, let's say nine, 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 this graph is called the locally spa. For every ice, again, G is uh, the irregular. Or the other way to say that is if the number of triangles, if we have few triangles, significantly smaller than DQ. And a key observation, maybe this is a let's say key, or let's say observations. So we connect this to the title of the talk. Why this is related to the intersection volume? Is that so? If we have a, let's say graph Z here, a vertex X, how can we bar the cutting? Say, and we want to bar according to this. We want to to say that the graph is locally spa, right? Which means we want to about the number of edges within the neighborhood. And if we have two, but this is U and V in the neighborhood of X, right? Then we are also in, in, in our setting, which means that U is in a bonds of radius R around X. V also in the bond of radius R around X. And they are adjacent, mean that the distance between U and V is, uh, is a smooth R. So, for example, which means that V is in the. So, if we fetch U, for example, then we then V is in the intersections XR, intersection of the two bond and is R. And we can simply bow the number of edges so the so we can bound the number of edges within the neighborhood by first by 
about the number of choices for u. So it's a mod d because the, the graph is d regular. So d is number of choices for u. And for v, we can bound by the cardinality of this intersection. Is this a, any question? So in actually in our, our problem is a little bit complicated because this because this bar is not a way good because the intersection can be very big if uh, the distance between u and x is, is big. So we, we kind of uh, got some refinement of this definition to make it work. But uh, so this, I think this, this kind of captures the idea of why the intersection volume is crucial for showing the locally spanish of the graph. Yeah, so if we somehow can prove that this intersection, intersection of these two ball is small, the cardinality is much smaller than D, then this automatically give an this upper bound for the number of edges within the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah maximum. Yeah, you are right. Yeah, I was a bit uh, yeah, maximum. Or if you can even push. I see. Over you, as you wish. So if we have a good upper bound, if we can bar this maximum by quantity, which is much smaller than D, then we are happy. But actually, this is this is not this is not much smaller than D square. If if the distance between because when the distance between X and U is, is big, then this can be everything. The so two ball can cover, almost, in the session of two ball can cover actually almost everything. So we need to cut off this into range when the distance between X and U is, is small, or when the distance between them is big. But that's a, that's a technical issue. So now the questions become to bow the intersection of two balls of the same radius in a given matrix space. And it's actually true for this example that the qualitatively speaking, the intersection of the two bonds of the same radius is small. So instead of stepping the how this down precisely, I will just give you an idea how, how we how we prove it. And then you can see what kind of condition will be made. So let's maybe let's start uh, with uh, the Euclidean spice. So let's say we have this Euclidean spice, and the distance is just the Euclidean distance. Then intuitively, the, let's say we have two balls of the same radius as R. Then I claim that uh, the intersection of these two balls as is small. 
under suitable condition. So how can we prove it in this setting? So we can enclose this intersection by so so this is the middle point of X and Y. Then we can cover this intersection by by a bond with this center right here. This is right. Here. So we can enclose it by by this bond, the center C. And what is the radius here? Let's use uh, capital R. So capital R equal. So we can apply, for example, Pythagorean theorem for this triangle triangle. So R square is this, or is this square with little R square minus the this distance square. Let's say the distance between X and I square. Half of so is is this one. So in particular if I minus I is let's say of the order of magnitudes of X minus Y, the distance between X minus Y is R. Let's say if Then R is, let's say, strictly smaller than R, let's say 0.99 R. If, or let's say this is at least 0.1 R. Then capital R is at least less of to be safe, <laughs> or you can put more nine, then it should be true. And then the volume of this intersection is the volume of the intersection, or the intersection volume for sure. Okay. Divided by the volume of this ball. Is as not the the volume. So this intersection volume is as not the volume of, of this ball because we enclose it by a bigger ball. So we can have this upper bar, and we know that this exactly capital R of R of a little R to the dimension n. And we know that this is so. This is exponentially small. Yeah. So this is short and nice, but unfortunately, it does not extend to discrete setting. So if you try to enclose, if instead of a glitch, a glitching ball, we consider the QRI cube with uh, equipped with the Hamming distance, and we try to bar the intersection volume by enclosing this intersection by a, a bigger ball, then we can. It's going to take you a few minutes to to figure out that. The radius of this ball is is actually as big as R. So this simple argument does not work for for this discrete setting. So the the message is that this does not work. Does not extend to discrete system. And there is another. So
so because we are interested in the, let's say if we are only interested in the finite setting, then we can try to to prove this directly. Let's say if we are in the discrete setting, and we try to bound this intersection volume directly instead of enclosing it by a bigger ball. And we is also possible, but it is quite complicated. For example, I cannot even remember. So we have an exact formula for the intersection, the cardinality of the intersection. But it's also the, the formula itself is quite cumbersome. It's not. I cannot remember. Do you remember the formula? <laughs> okay. Good. Okay, so this is this. So the formula, so the volume. So, uh, okay, so here. Let's say the Hamlin distance between X and Y is uh, we denote this by, by K. K is some integer because we are in discrete setting. And R here is uh, okay. Then the intersection volume. Is we okay. so this is kind of, I think that can be left an, as an exercise. It's not a difficult one. But the, I think you have to sit down to, to see why we choose not a difficult one. So it's quite so this is a formula. Q minus I and then we have this this term some n minus k minus t q minus one minus t when t is at most something okay. is just a minimum of n minus k, uh, r minus k plus i, and r minus k plus i. So this is the formula. And uh, I think Young and Verdi In, in the coding paper, they, they, they estimated this uh, intersection volume in the binary case, and Q is 2. But the, the proof is uh, the proof is computer assisted proof. And still, with the assistance of computers, the proof is quite long and complicated. So this to manage to estimate this, then uh, this q equal to the binary k. And then, so I think maybe this is from 2004 or 5. Let's say 2005. And for one news, Extended the young body to, to general case without the general case. And the proof is, is simpler than the ones of, of young and body, but it's still complicated. And it is many, even though the proof is elementary, the proof is quite, quite long, I think, at least 10 pages long. Mm.
and uh, and also more serious, uh, this the proof does not extend to the other setting, so it's not clear if the proof idea can be extended to the cost and weight cost setting. And actually, that was an open question by by Zhang and Vedi whether we can improve the simple low bound in the constant quest cost setting. So in our paper, we proposed uh, the third approach to, to this problem, estimate, the problem of estimating the volume of the intersection of two bonds. And our proof, uh, that approach actually work for on the, on the setting which I mentioned. So it provides a unified proof to all know this out. And this also solves the, the open question re regarding the, the constant red cost. And it also have other applications that I did not mention here. So how do we, so we propose a probabilistic, probabilistic approach. Again, I will illustrate it in the Euclidean setting because it's simpler to describe and it captures uh, the main idea. So we have two points X and Y in, in R to the N. And we want to, to upper bar the volume of these regions. So how can we do that? So we let's to do that we just draw a, a point X uniformly at random from this region. Uniformly at random from the intersections. And we, we are, what we are interested in is a Inter the, the ratio between the intersection of the two bonds divided by the volume of the ball of radius r of, of this ball. And this is that the probability that's uh, Pass up some emergencies. Uh. <laughs> Maybe it's a butterfly phenomenon. So let's for convenience denote the intersection by I. Then this ratio is just the probability that I belong to I. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Of course. I think you you are confused because it's, so we draw a point uniformly a random from the this ball. And I denote the intersection, intersection by I. Then the probability, the ratio of these two probability of these two volumes is that the probability that a random point belong to the intersection. 
let's, let's follow from the definition of uh, the uniformly distribution. So our task now become to, to estimate this probability. Right? So how can we bound this probability? So the, the Euclidean this space has this very nice property that if we look at the, this uh, Euclidean ball, so most of its follow concentrate near a very thin cell around the boundary. For a cleaning space, it's simply because we have that formula, right? the volume if it is R prime, then this is equal to R prime of R to the N, which implies that the, most of the volume of the bone concentrates near the boundary. So we can, by this fact, we can pretend nicely is we can make it like this, but we can pretend that X is draw uniformly from the boundary, from the from the, this sphere. So, so let's say this is this our our new X. This is a probability that. So here we can assume, can assume that S is uniformly chosen from, from this sphere. And S belong to I. Mean, mean that the distance between the, between capital X and the, the distance are uh, smaller than, than R. We already know that X belong to this ball. So which means this distance is already smaller than R. So this is the same as the this probability is that the distance to y is, is as most r. And minus i is because this is the definition of i. And this is the same as the probability that the distance between x and y is as most r because we already have this because the uh, x is belong to this ball, this sphere. So to bar this, we use the uh, concentrations. So this is the probability that I minus I subtract the expectations minus the S. If 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 this quantity and it's turned out that's for a cleaning space, this expectation is strictly weaker than R. Let's think about this setting for this parameter then we can this let's say one point.
because just from, from this picture, you can see it from this picture, because in high dimensions, a cleaning ball, this part is very tiny. So most of the pi, if you draw it from this sphere, are lying here. Let's say if they're here, then the distance to to i is or from anywhere here, let's say they're from here, then it's already much bigger than r. So intuitively, we should have some gain here. And for Euclidean space, is that is a simple exercise to, to, to solve that is bigger than us. It, it kind of estimates some integration. You can even compute this expectation. So then by concentration, this is expo exponentially small. Let's say it's just equal to the probability that. Let's say I denote this by f of f of i. Smaller than a negative of zero zero. And the expectation of f is zero. So if the concentration holds them, it's just that this quantity is small. So this is exponentially small. And we is the guy here because this function is this kind of a, a continuous function. It's a dependence on the coordinates are quite smooth. If we change the coordinates a little bit, then the Value of the function does not change much. So it's called the lift shift condition. And if we have a lift shift function or kind of a smoothly behaved function over the sphere, a gliding sphere, then we have the concentration for that function. And this, this kind of uh, universal uh, phenomenon is not only true for a gliding space, but also true for discrete space. But for, for the discrete space, we, because the concentration inequality are not available in literature, we, we have to prove, prove them. Yeah. Okay. So by this, I, I end my talk. Yeah, you, you are right. That's the it is that's our gra our graph is we believe that is not very far from one now. But we we but to improve over the love D get a further improvement we have using the graph theoretic approach we need to to say if the our graph satisfies some of some property or some graph property then we we get a uh, better even better improvement. But we don't know which graph property we we, we, we should should use. Or we can use. Yeah, but, but that's a very, very good question. It's a very plausible approach. Yeah. 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 Minimum set uh, 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 
I'm not aware of the way we were, yeah, because we were focusing on impose this is lower than we, we were not thinking about, about that question. Is that a, a good one? But I, I, I would say maybe from a coding theory point of view, this improving the the improving the low value is kind of I'm not sure. The improving the size of the maximum cost is more natural from a from a coding theory point of view.